let us continue the summarizing of uh, experimental physics 1. See in last two classes, uh, I have briefly discussed about the experiments on oscillation, basically spring mass system, simple pendulum and compound pendulum, poles pendulum, couple pendulum. So, in coupled oscillation, we have seen that one oscillator transfer the energy to the other one and vice versa. So, coupled oscillation of thousands oscillator together in a chain basically produce wave. So, let us uh, see uh, the wave experiments on wave also we have demonstrated in experimental physics 1. So, so we have demonstrated transverse wave in a string and determine the phase velocity of wave in in the string as well as we have determined the mass per unit length of the string right. Also we have demonstrated longitudinal wave in a ER column and determine the velocity of sound in ER. So, from this experiment we have realized that what are the transverse and longitudinal waves and how to produce them. Observation of nodal and antinodal points in stationary waves, what is the wavelength in practice in string vibration you have seen the this nodal and antinodal points okay, and uh, the wavelength. Uh, there are this uh, uh, between uh, between two nodal points. So, this wavelength is basically lambda by 2 half. So, uh, so three nodal points if you take distance between three nodal points or or three antinodal points. So, that is the wavelength. So, that in practice we have we have uh, seen we have realized uh, also, uh, we have uh, uh, measured the velocity of waves. So, how to measure the velocity wave of waves? That also uh, we have we have uh, seen, and we have realized that what are the fundamental mode or first, second, third harmonics, right? So, changing the frequency of the uh, of the uh, in the string. So, we are able to uh, able to generate produce the uh, waves of different harmonics right. So, first harmonic. So, if only one wavelength will be lambda by 2 for the length of the of the uh, string right. So, this is the fundamental mode or, or, or uh, uh, first harmonics. Similarly, uh, changing the frequency, uh, we are able to generate the second harmonics, then third harmonics. So, these are basically whatever in theory in books we read. So, these things practically we observe in our laboratory. Uh, then we demonstrated the experiment on, on moment of inertia, in moment of inertia of a wheel basically fly wheel. So, moment of inertia of any any object which which rotate which has rotational motion uh, you know that uh, this uh, moment of inertia and mass these are uh, basically equivalent. So, whatever the function of mass in case of in case of linear motion. So, the same function of moment of inertia in case of rotational motion right. Like in one case this force another case is torque right. So, uh, so moment of inertia of any any uh, object uh, one can find out right. So, in our laboratory we have taken flywheel. 
So, theoretically it is difficult to calculate this moment of inertia of flywheel, but experimentally it is uh, it is not difficult to measure. But from this experiment from the demonstration of this experiment uh, what we learned or what we have seen that is the basically uh, conversion of potential energy directly into the kinetic energy right. So, that practically we realized practically we have seen that uh, a small mass at a height h when it is released then it is the potential is mg h. So, it is a height is decreasing and simultaneously the speed of the wheel is increasing. So, uh, rotational energy of the of the of the uh, north spring this wheel of the wheel uh, is uh, is increasing right. So, it is the direct conversion of potential energy into kinetic energy and they are conserved right from that conservation basically uh, we have uh, uh, we found the moment of inertia of the flywheel. Uh, so, the energy actually this energy actually is kinetic energy is rotating ok. That means, uh, from potential energy potential energy is transferred to the wheel and wheel is rotating with a with a angular velocity omega. So, as if the energy stored in the wheel that is half i omega square right. So, this energy from here you can see depends on the moment of inertia and angular velocity. So, most machinery has parts which revolve on their longitudinal axis wheels, shafts, electronic motors, con, uh, centrifugal pumps everywhere these wheels are used right. So, the the flywheel is essentially a mechanical battery, it is uh, used as a mechanical battery as it stores the energy and then discharge. Okay. So, there are lot of application of this basically wheel flywheel. Okay. So, this experiment help us to understand basically many application where wheels are involved. Right. So, uh, next uh, experiments uh, we have uh, demonstrated in, in, in experimental physics 1. So, that basically experiments uh, of Young modular surface tension and viscosity. These three experiments I mentioned here together because this basically is related with the uh, uh, elasticity, it is the it is related with the it is a basically it is the uh, it is related with the properties of the matter, properties of the matter. So, how one can measure the uh, property of matter. So, from this experiment like Young modulus, surface tension, this viscosity coefficient right. So, these are the um, these are the parameters which uh, which uh, which tells about the property of that uh, material of that matter ok. So, in case of Young modulus we used cantilever beam method ok. We used cantilever beam uh, and bending of beam is used basically in many uh, many applications. Okay. So, as for example, this one instrument this called atomic force microscopy, this is used for imaging the surface of the of the material, right. It is a to see the uh, morphology uh, of the material, what is the structure. Uh, atomic structure basically uh, uh, of the surface of the of the material. So, that imaging of surface of a material in 1 nanometer resolution. So, using this atomic force microscopy uh, uh, really we take image of the surface in 1 nanometer resolution very very useful uh, instrument for research in material research. Okay. So, in this case this basically 
this cantilever bending is used. Uh, uh, so, that is the heart of this uh, of this instrument. Uh, uh, so, uh, I think uh, uh, you will be knowing about this instrument uh, later on. So, then also this another instrument cantilever beam manometer I use in my laboratory research laboratory. Uh, this this also it is this magnetometer is used to study the magnetic properties like magnetization, magnetostriction, magnetocrystalline anisotropy of magnetic material. Okay. So, for this magnetometer is used is called cantilever beam magnetometer. In this magnetometer also the heart of this instrument is basically this bending of the uh, cantilever. So, whatever experiment we have done, so it is not only that we have measured the Young modulus, but uh, but we have learned about the about the uh, bending moment uh, theory, and uh, this bending moment theory is applied for uh, uh, other application. So I mentioned uh, two of them, but there are there are many application, and this bending of the cantilever is very very uh, useful for for application purpose. Uh, so, of course, this uh, in mechanical energy e e engineering, uh, so mechanical engineering cannot be thought of without elastic property of materials, right. So, so, uh, so uh, not only we have measured the young modulus, young modulus measuring young modulus that the uh, you can you can basically uh, came to know the, uh, the elastic properties of the material. So, that is useful for mechanical engineering. Uh, that is, this is the, uh, this is the uh, uh, common use, but apart from that also I mentioned there are other, other application uh, of the bending of the, of the cantilever. Uh, similarly, for uh, this uh, surface tension uh, this uh, we have demonstrated the measurement of surface tension of water by capillary rise method. So, uh, so capillary rise. So we have seen that we have used very uh, uh, this uh, we have used tube with very uh, uh, smaller radius of hole. So that's we tell basically capillary tube. So, there we have seen that this uh, water or liquid rise uh, through this uh, capillary tube, why it rise that is because of surface tension and it is balanced with the, the surface tension and as well as the gravitational force uh, this downwards. So, that liquid column uh, it balanced with uh, that uh, gravitational um, weight force it is downward and this upward that is the uh, that is the surface tension. Okay. So, uh, so these two force when balanced so that decide the uh, rise of the uh, liquid in the capillary tube. So, it is the automatically it, it, it just rise uh, uh, through the capillary tube. So, that is because of the surface tension. So, uh, so, this because of the surface tension you know in plants, how water move from roots tree, if tree in tree, how water moves from the ground to the leaf. So, that is that is because of this that is that is basically because of the capillary rise due to the surface tension. Okay. So, this is the natural phenomena uh, you can see uh, in plants. Also, we can see the effects of surface tension in daily life like insects can move or walk on the water surface, small insect. So, they can walk on the surface of the water, on the surface of the liquid that is because of the surface tension. Also, mosquito eggs can float on water. Right. So, that is why this uh, in rainy season time 
So, these uh, water are uh, in different places they are stored and we are afraid that uh, there will be a uh, lot of mosquito because of that uh, stagnant water. So, we try to avoid that uh, stagnant water because this mosquito they, their eggs it is float on the on the stagnant water surface because of surface tension and then it is uh, it uh, generates uh, uh, multiple number of, of, of mosquitoes right. So, to destroy that one to destroy that one generally I do not know whether you have noticed or not uh, we generally uh, people use kerosene oil you know kerosene oil kerosene oil is spread on water so that mosquitoes eggs sink and the breeding stops because kerosene oil they say it is a surface tension is, is smaller than the water ok when you will spread this kerosene oil oil then this uh, this mosquito uh, that uh, x so no longer it can it can it can float on the kerosene oil because its surface tension is is uh, smaller ok so it is now under it underneath the underneath the kerosene oil ok surface of the kerosene oil so that is the destroyed so this x are destroyed and so you uh, so you can stop the breeding of the uh, of the uh, mosquitoes. So, another also this uh, warm water is used for washing why because the heating reduces the surface tension ok. So, surface tension because of surface tension. So, when you are washing something either cloths or, or this utensils ok. So, if surface tension is smaller, so cleaning will be better because uh, because this uh, water can reach uh, easily or liquid can reach easily uh, into the into the place where you want to uh, clean. Okay, very small pores, etc. Uh, etc. Et right. So. So, if surface tension is less that is the is the better for washing. So, that is why warming water has less surface tension because with temperature surface tension decreases of water. So, that is why uh, from experience without knowing this physics from experience people use the hot water for warm water for for uh, uh, washing the cloths for washing the utensils right so so reason is basically is a surface tension ok and also we uh, add detergent so we tell that if we add detergent so cleaning will be better so adding detergent also it it reduces the surface tension of the water ok of the liquid ok. So, that is why adding detergent actually uh, to even cold water it is basically has the same action. So, uh, so reducing the surface tension we can clean the uh, things better right. So, these are the practical the application in our daily life. So, anyway so, uh, scientifically how we can measure the surface tension as well as what are the application of this importance of the surface tension in our daily life. So, that is why that is what I try to uh, tell you. Uh, next uh, uh, another experiment we have demonstrated that is the viscous flow in a capillary tube. We have demonstrated viscous flow of liquid in a capillary tube right. So, viscosity tells the resistance in motion of liquid it is nothing but the resistance when liquid flows through a through a tube ok. So, when liquid have the 
uh, solid liquid uh, interface. So, during the motion of the liquid it fills the resistance, it fills the resistance. So, that is we express in terms of the in terms of the viscosity coefficient of viscosity. Okay. So, knowing the value of viscosity of different liquid the application of them are decided. Okay. So, where you want to apply uh, so in some application so this coefficient of viscosity of the liquid it is uh, is necessary is required as for example, if you want to move fluid then viscosity is very important factor to decide the diameter of pipe and the capacity of pump right. So, which liquid you want to flow through a, through a uh, pipe and what is the viscosity of this uh, liquid. So, depending on that one has to choose the diameter of the pipe as well as uh, pump capacity of the pump right. You want to pump the liquid through the uh, through the pipe you want to move liquid from one place to the another place through a pipe. So, which liquid you want whether water or whether uh, some other liquid. So, uh, so, uh, so this uh, design of the pump and uh, uh, pipe uh, size its length its diameter. Okay it has to be so it it will depend on the uh, on the viscosity of the liquid which you want to uh, want to flow okay so another application uh, of viscosity you are quite familiar that in for lubrication purpose we use the uh, we use uh, liquid right in our vehicles where something is rotating okay there we use lubricant Okay. So, in lubrication of moving parts in machine higher viscous liquid is used to keep separate the moving surface from the fixed surface to reduce the friction right. So, uh, actually something is moving about an axle right about an axis axle right. So, when it is moving, so there will be friction between this rotating uh, wheel as well as the axle right. So, wherever they have contact, now there will be friction that it will generate heat etcetera. So, we want to reduce this friction. So, for that what we have to what what we need? we have to keep the contact surface of this uh, wheel and the axle, uh, we have to keep them separate. So, to keep them separate we use liquid. So, if I use water, water cannot keep them separate. Okay. So, because its viscosity is, is lower. So, we have to use a liquid which has higher viscous viscosity. Okay. So, then that will be able to separate keep separate this this the contact surface of, 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 of wheel and the and the axle. Okay. So, that is why uh, we use mobile kind of things it is viscosities or some lubricant it is viscosities is very very high compared to the water. Okay. So, so, these are the practical application of viscosity and the measurement of viscous uh, coefficient of viscosity is, is also is very important. So, one has to know the viscosity coefficient of viscosity of, uh, of liquids which you want to uh, use for application. So, so next uh, we have we have demonstrated few experiments we have demonstrated few experiments on thermal properties. So, what are the experiments we have demonstrated? So, this uh, we have basically 
measure the linear expansion of metal rod and calculate a linear expansion coefficient. From that experiment specially we have learned we have learned how to control temperature using PID controller PID that is proportional derivative and integral right integral controller I explained during the experiment I explained uh, how it controls the temperature how uh, it is very useful to, to uh, for precise uh, control of temperature. So, also we have seen that we have seen the application of thermocouple okay, uh, to read the temperature to read the temperature uh, in that uh, experiment. So, uh, and of course, the experiment on thermocouple we have demonstrated separately uh, uh, in our laboratory. So, then another experiment that uh, how to measure the conductivity of, of bad conductor and one can measure the same also for good conductor. So, methods are different, but we have uh, we have demonstrated only only how to measure the conductivity for bad conductor again these are the parameters you know this is the property of the material uh, thermal property of the material and for application these are very important to know the uh, conductivity of, of, of uh, different materials right. So, uh, so, uh, so we, we took probably glass when we are measuring. So, one can use the find out the same way this for rubber from other bad conductors the conductivity uh, thermal conductivity. Uh, also, we have verified the Dulong Pedit's uh, law. Uh, it is a uh, so uh, uh, this experiment we have demonstrated. Also, we have uh, determined the uh, Joule's constant J, which tells us Joule's constant J basically tells us the conversion of uh, mechanical work into heat. So, what is the ratio between the between the mechanical work and heat when they convert uh, to each other right. So, uh, this is the this is the fundamental constant you know J Joule's constant. So, that also we have measured in our uh, uh, laboratory uh, as I mentioned that already that also this thermocouple uh, this uh, we used for the measurement of uh, temperature. Uh, so, mo in most of the cases this thermocouple is so useful for measuring the temperature especially higher temperature in industry in our uh, laboratory research laboratory for different uh, instrument. Uh, most of the instrument where we uh, uh, measure the property as a function of temperature. So, we have to uh, you have to use the uh, thermometer. So, basically this uh, uh, thermocouple is a very useful thermometer for measuring higher temperature. So, uh, different kinds of thermocouples are there that I have described. So, how to measure the uh, so how how one thermocouple is uh, used for measuring the temperature basically uh, we have shown that calibration of the thermocouple in the laboratory calibration curve for knowing known temperature what is the EMF generated what is the voltage generated. So, that uh, one first one have to has to calibrate the thermocouple and then uh, we can use uh, that thermocouple for measurement of the unknown temperature. Also, uh, we have discussed, we have demonstrated the platinum resistance thermometer and also we have measured the unknown temperature. So, these are the experiment uh, related to the temperature, related to the heat, related to the thermal properties uh, of the matter. So, uh, we have demonstrated uh, in the laboratory. So, uh, uh, so these are the uh, experiments we have demonstrated non-electrical experiment basically most of them 
and now in thermal thermal, thermal properties there are some is the junction between the uh, non electrical and electrical. So, heat is converted into the voltage ok. So, this is the uh, uh, this is the basically um, uh, junction uh, between the electrical and non electrical experiments. So, uh, in next class I will discuss I will I will uh, discuss about the experiment on uh, electricity and magnetism uh, whatever we had demonstrated uh, in experiment 261. So, let me stop here thank you for your attention.